The question now is who will take Qasim Soleimani's place after his killing has been put to rest. In fact, uh, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini has found Soleimani's replacement in a man called Ismail Ghani. Khomeini, after his appointment, said that the program of the Quds Force will remain the same after Soleimani's assassination. Brigadier General Ismail Ghani has in fact served as a deputy commander of the same force earlier. He was appointed as a new commander just a day after Soleimani was killed in the U.S.-sponsored airstrike in Baghdad. Ghani has been a deputy of the country's slave top general since 1997. This was the same year when Soleimani became the force's chief commander. Quds Force is the military unit responsible for projecting Iran's influence via proxies across the Middle East. It's important to note here that Ismail Ghani shares a close relationship with the supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini. Khomeini described Ghani as one of the most decorated commanders of the Quds Force Guards while appointing him. Killing of Soleimani marks a major escalation in the standoff between Washington and Iran. Before Qasem Soleimani's killing, Iran has already been reeling under the trade sanctions imposed by the U.S. Remember, the U.S. President Trump also withdrew from the 2015 nuclear deal. The killing of General Qasem Soleimani represents a dramatic escalation in the low-level conflict between the U.S. and Iran with, in fact, a lot of consequences. It's not surprising then that he has been put in fact been on America's radar for long. But why strike now? That's the question. Well, this year, a lot of Iranian action against uh, the U.S. and its allies went without a direct response from the U.S. Well, in 2019. The month of June, an American surveillance drone was shot down by Iran at first. Military action seemed probable, but the U.S. had pulled back airstrikes of Iran Iranian targets, saying it was not a proportionate response to the unmanned drone that was brought down. Three months later, a barrage of missiles and drones targeted two of the world's most important oil facilities in Saudi Arabia, although the U.S. administration credibly blamed Iran for the attacks. Trump did not authorize any military operation in response to an attack on a close ally. And just recently, a rocket attack in northern Iraq killed an American contractor and wounded several military personnel. And this was the first U.S. casualty from a string of recent strikes, but just as Trump did in October when he authorized to kill the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, he approved the strike to kill Soleimani this time. The strike against Soleimani suggests that President Trump is increasingly confident in his use of American military power. The timing of the killing of Iran Iranian leader Soleimani, had ordered by U.S. President Trump, has raised many questions. The timing of the strike is similar to another president of the United States who was also facing an impeachment inquiry like Trump. Back in 1998, Bill Clinton was facing an impeachment inquiry when he ordered a missile strike in Iraq. At the time, Clinton had stated that carrying out the missile strike in Iraq was imperative to prevent Iraq from acquiring the capacity to produce weapons of mass destruction. As a result, the impeachment vote in the House was delayed as Clinton launched the missile strikes in Iraq. Remember, Donald Trump was also recently impeached by the U.S. Congress for abusing his office to pressure a foreign country to probe a rival in 2020 presidential elections. He is awaiting his trial in Senate. Moreover, many netizens are pointing out that the strike on Iran may have been with an eye on the upcoming presidential elections. In fact, back in 2011, Trump tweeted that the then-president Barack Obama would start a war with Iran just to get re-elected.